My name is Rob Altron, VP of Marketing for Harico Golf, and I'll be your moderator for today's Harico webinar titled The Basics of Shaft Cutting. The webinar will be led by Harico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Some of you are repeat uh, webinar attendees, so if you've heard my little spiel here for uh, the next two minutes, just uh, you can go get a drink of water. It'll only be a couple minutes. Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in his best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. Let me get a few housekeeping items out of the way first. Your audio settings are muted, which means we cannot hear you, so don't worry about coughing or phone ringing in the background because no one can hear it. If you look at your GoToWebinar dashboard located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the words chat and question. If you expand this box, you'll see empty spaces for you to type any questions or problems you may have throughout the webinar. Because we have limited time, we are saving the question and answer period for the end when Jeff has completed his talk. Feel free to type any questions you may have. I will make sure time providing that we will get to them at the end. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It is being recorded, and you will be sent an email with a link to the MP3 and slideshow of the complete webinar. And for those of you that are listening on your computer speakers, I can't control the volume on that. You can try to crank them up as high as you can. If that doesn't work, then go up to your audio setting. There's a little box that says audio. You may then want to use a call-in on the telephone because folks that use the telephone seem to have a much better audio connection than those off the uh, computer speakers. And like I said, I can't control the volume on your speakers. So, okay, I think that's about it. And I'd like to turn it over to Technical Director Jeff Summit. Take it away, Jeff. Thank you, Rob. And thanks, everybody, for uh, showing up today. Hold on one second. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'd, I'd first like to start out by saying that there's no one, one right way to build golf clubs. Think of scoring a touchdown in football. You can run the ball or you can pass the ball. The end result's the same. Club makers can assemble clubs with a variety of tools that they may possibly have in their home shop. While larger volume club, club makers may elect to have automated equipment to speed up the process. A club maker or a repair shop could potentially encounter shafts made from different materials, from carbon steel, steel alloys, titanium, aluminum, fiberglass, graphite, and other composite materials. Standard weight carbon steel and some lightweight steel alloys, aluminum, and titanium can be cut from a variety of tools, from a simple tubing cutter to a motorized device such as an abrasive cutoff saw. In contrast, graphite and composite type shafts are best cut by abrasive cutting devices to permit splintering the shafts. Which tool or method you use will be dependent upon your level of a tool investment um, that you make in your shop as well as what materials you're going to be cu uh, cutting. But it is important that you choose among the following methods for cutting the shaft that fits your budget. The, uh, let's talk about the tubing cutter or pipe cutter first. It's a low-cost method, at least initially, for cutting steel shafts. These are not designed to cut composite or graphite shafts. While there may be specialty wheels available, the stock wheels will splinter these types of shafts. Therefore, I suggest using a tubing cutter strictly for steel shafts. You can pick up a tubing cutter and even extra wheels at your local hardware or home improvement store. I say extra wheels because there will be a limited amount of cuts you can make before the blade becomes so dull that it's no longer efficient. How long? Well, you might be able to get two or three sets of irons. Remember that each steel shaft that you cut, you'll be cutting off both ends. The key to using a tubing cutter is to gradually build up pressure. Do not over-tighten the tubing cutter or there's a potential of cracking the shaft, especially on these lighter uh, weight steel shafts or ones that weigh under 100 grams. Over-tightening can also reduce your tubing cutter's blade life.
special care should be addressed at the butt end. It's also the thinnest portion of the shaft. Over-tightening can easily make the shaft go out around. Luckily, the tip of the shaft is much thicker and you won't run into that same problem. The best way to use your tubing cutter is to align the blade on the mark where you want to cut. You snug up the wheel that will allow it to spin around the shaft in a straight line. Did, did Jeff, did you, let me interrupt you. Did, you. did you want me to run the video now? Not, not yet. Uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, folks. Okay. Just, just, just alert me when I need to run it. Okay. Um, just be careful that you don't allow the wheel to walk up the shaft. Otherwise, that will affect how much you tip trim the shaft. After several turns, tighten the tension and continue to spin it around the shaft. Depending on the sharpness of your wheel, uh, you may have to repeat this several times. You can perform this operation with the shaft in the vice clamp or even freehand. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. When you're just about to cut through the shaft, you might be able to just snap off the piece of your, the, the shaft by hand, or you could just continue cutting it and the, the piece will fall to the ground. And due to the pressure from cutting, the shaft will oft, often have a small burr develop. It's to, uh, best to remove that now, otherwise that piece could break off and create a small rattle. Uh, oftentimes there's a retractable or foldable reamer on your tubing cutter that you simply ro rotate inside the freshly cut shaft to remove the burr. You know that little black pointy thing you wondered what it was for on the uh, tubing cutter? And one other trick. For cutting small amounts like a half inch or less, it may be hard if not impossible to cut it with the tubing cutter. In those cases, you might just need to put an old used steel shaft or an extender to support the tubing cutter. Okay, Rob, let's, uh, let's run the video real quick. One inch. That's how much we're going to tip trim based on the trimming instructions in the catalog. Next, we're going to trim this with the tubing cutter. walk it around and make sure that it goes in a nice straight line. Then you gradually build up pressure. This has been cut. This wheel has been used quite a bit, so it's semi-dull right now brand new blade would have gone through that much quicker. Okay, that trimmed the shaft nice and clean. Now what you do is use this little part here to deburr it and that'll get any loose debris out. And that's it.